with my brothers and sisters in Christ as these pre-recorded reflections continue while I'm with our pilgrims in Greece. We read today from the Office of Readings, from the second reading, which is from the beginning of a letter to the Trallians by St. Ignatius of Antioch, bishop and martyr. St. Ignatius says, Ignatius, also called Theophorus, to the Holy Church at Trallis in the province of Asia, dear to God, the Father of Jesus Christ, elect and worthy of God, enjoying peace in body and in the spirit through the passion of Jesus Christ, who is our hope through our resurrection when we rise to him. In the manner of the apostles, I too send greetings to you with the fullness of grace and extend my every best wish. Reports of your splendid character have reached me, how you are beyond reproach and ever unshaken in your patient endurance, qualities that you have not acquired but are yours by nature. My informant was your own bishop Polybius, who by the will of God and Jesus Christ visited me here in Smyrna. He so fully entered into my joy at being in chains for Christ that I came to see your whole community embodied in him. Moreover, when I learned from him of your God-given kindliness toward me, I broke out in words of praise for God. It is on him I discovered that you pattern your lives. Your submission to your bishop, who is in the place of Jesus Christ, shows me that you are not living as men usually do, but in the manner of Jesus himself, who died for us, that you might escape death by belief in his death. Thus, one thing is necessary, and you already observe it that you do nothing without your bishop. Indeed, be subject to the clergy as well, seeing in them the apostles of Jesus Christ our hope. For if we live in him, we shall be found in him. Deacons, too, who are ministers of the mysteries of Jesus, should in all things be pleasing to all men. For, for they are not mere servants with food and drink, but emissaries of God's church. Hence they should guard themselves against anything deserving reproach as they would against fire. Similarly, all should respect the deacons as Jesus Christ, just as all should regard the bishop as the image of the Father, and the clergy as God's senate and the college of the apostles. Without these three orders, you cannot begin to speak of a church. I am confident that you share my feelings in this matter, for I have had an example of your love and the person of your bishop, who is with me now. His whole bearing is a great lesson and his very gentleness wields a mighty influence. By God's grace, there are many things I understand, but I keep well within my limitations, for fear that boasting should be my undoing. At the moment, then, I must be more apprehensive than ever and pay no attention at all to those who flatter me. Their praise is as a scourge. For though I have a fierce desire to suffer martyrdom, I know not whether I am worthy of it. Most people are unaware of my passionate longing, but it assails me with increasing intensity. My present need, then, is for that humility by which the prince of this world is overthrown. And so I strongly urge you, not I so much as the love of Jesus Christ, to be nourished exclusively on Christian fare, abstaining from the alien food that is heresy. And this you do, this, and this you will do, if you are neither arrogant nor cut off from God, from Jesus Christ, and from the bishop and the teachings of the apostles. Whoever is within the sanctuary is pure, but whoever is not is unclean. That is to say, whoever acts apart from the bishop and the clergy and the deacons is not pure in his conscience. In writing this, it is not that I am aware of anything of the sort among you. I only wish to forewarn you, for you are my dearest children. May God bless you all.